There we go. Good morning, and welcome to the last day of the wheelchair basketball tournament here at the Canada Games 2019. Mitch Robson alongside Mike Frogley once again. And Frog, a little bittersweet as the competition comes to an end today, but we finish it out on a strong note with a nice slate of games starting here with Manitoba and BC. Yeah, one of the great things about getting a chance to see these games on this last day is that throughout the course of the tournament, we've seen the players constantly growing. They're young players, there's room to grow, and they've all grown as the tournament goes on. And so this last day affords us the opportunity to see them each at their very best. So a, a great day to watch wheelchair basketball here and see the best of the entire week. BC uh, changing up their regular starting lineup, getting some of their young women in Riley Bisson and Lynette Bowen get the start. And you just mentioned Lynette Bowen, a really instinctive, smart player. Yeah, I've had a chance to go out and do uh, high performance training camps in British Columbia and in Manitoba. When I've been out, I've been thoroughly impressed with the way that BC's been developing their program, really building a good foundation to provide a, a long-term sustainable program. And some of the players that really stand out, I've worked with Lynette, very bright young player. Uh, I love the fierce competitiveness of Joel uh, Ebert. They call him Turbo in the BC program. Uh, and uh, those are just examples of, of players on BC that, that really fight hard but are also very smart players. And Manitoba, we've seen that this team growing each and every game. A great all-round team that has everybody contributing. Yeah, Manitoba, tough couple of first games but came out yesterday and just put on a clinic against Newfoundland, so we'll see if they can channel that positive energy into two games today as they give up a bucket to start. Really nice baseline cut by uh, Nick Van Bakel. He cut on uh, the back of the Manitoba defender, spotted up down low, initiated out of the cross pick high, something we haven't seen a lot from BC, but has been open, so it's good to see that early. Beth Johnson has a ton of space, goes down to Josh Brown, and Bisson in on the flyby, contested that. Rebound, shot no good. Third effort, he's in a sea of arms. Trying to make room, draws a foul and one. Nice play. Josh finding that space to shoot. We've talked in previous games about there being four spots to shoot from in the post. High left, high right, low right, low left. Josh faking high left, opening up that spot low right to get that shot and draw the foul. Josh, the leader of this Manitoba group. Free throw is up, short. Off the hand of Riley Bissenden, Van Backel saves it. And they'll get to go forward now. Over the head of Ewart, Bolin saves it. They gotta get it across half, they can't. Yeah, a little bit of court pressure by Manitoba. We haven't seen that a whole lot by them throughout the tournament, but just enough to delay BC from getting up court. I like the initial spacing by Manitoba as they really try to spread out the BC defenders. Pick there at the elbow, Brown will rise and fire. No good, Rossello sneaks in for the rebound, put back is good. Bernard Rossello on the board. Bernard, uh, one of these young players that is improving each and every game. Early on, missed a couple of shots, but they were in this tournament, great decisions. And now we're seeing him grow in and, and start to hit some of these shots down the, the final day. Down the lane, Beth Johnson with the contest, forces the miss. Brown weaves in and out. Cut off, dump inside, tough pass. Yeah, I saw Ryan Bolesky nod for the ball right there, but Josh gives it to him, but sometimes he can shake, shake that guy off inside if he's not open. Ryan guarded by Ben Garrett from BC at that time. Beth Johnson, active hands defensively, tips that out of his hand. And now Ewart's going to have to shoot. He dumps it down. Van Bakel, nice assist there from Joel Ewart. So we can see Beth Johnson from Manitoba extending on the point, guarding that... Uh, ben Garrett there, that means that pick, that cross pick's open for BC in future possessions if she continues to do that. Thomas Theveno pivots back, gets a shot, and in and out. Rossello almost snuck in for another rebound, and now it'll be tied up. Yeah, Bernard is uh, is waiting for, for Riley Bissenden from BC to turn her back, mm -hmm. and then he's cutting on her on those on those shots. She's going to have to keep an eye on him and make contact to box him out. 
Johnson gets the screen in front of her. Back to Josh Brown. Too long. And we're going to get an offensive foul in the backcourt on BC. Nick's first foul. Ryan Bolesky down on the far side. Gets himself back up. Good pick there. Devin O. Brown going all the way across. And Beth Johnson getting in on a cut on the offside, cutting on the back of Joel Ewert from BC. Had to rush that with the shot clock going down. Bissenden kick, cutting Nick Van Bakel down on the block. Shot is good. Yeah, good posi position by Renard Rossello. Just too short mm -hmm. going up against Nick Van Bakel. And a quick timeout for Manitoba. 6-4, BC leads early on. Yeah, I think... Uh, Coach Jaworski from, from Manitoba is a little bit concerned with how some of the players from BC are getting to the rim. He's going to make a little bit of an adjustment, probably overplay a little bit more on the baseline and really try to make those big players come back into the middle uh, where Manitoba's help defenders are. Especially what we saw yesterday, Manitoba against a Newfoundland team where they really extended their defense and were stuffing Newfoundland in the backcourt against this BC team without their primary ball handlers and Ben Hagel out there, what can you do to kind of force some turnovers? Well, I think the other thing, Manitoba has had a little bit of pressure up court and it's given BC some problems. BC has had problems in previous games against teams that have put pressure up court. And I think that's another thing too. Uh, if I'm Coach Uworski, I'm probably doing that a little bit more as well. I'm, I'm getting up court and putting a little bit more pressure, being a bit more aggressive on BC early. Seven zero down to the baseline. Josh Brown's shot off the front of the rim. Here goes Van Bakel up the floor. Cut across. Ben Garrett looking around. And yeah, there's that baseline cut again by Van Bakel. And Nick got that one to go with his left hand. You know he's a strong left-handed player. How is his right hand coming along? Well, we haven't seen it yet, so <laughs> we, we, we can't really comment. You know, Nick's, uh, Nick's a, a really fundamental player. He's a smart kid, and I know that, uh, that Coach Cass and the BC program, more importantly, um, his coach on Pender Island, uh, Tim Frick, legendary coach of wheelchair basketball. He's not going to let Nick off the hook, so I'm sure Nick's got a left hand. He just hasn't had a chance to use it yet. So one of the things, Beth Johnson, on that last possession, she really needs to overplay the baseline on Nick's cuts and really make Nick Bakel cut back into the middle. That's where that Manitoba help defender is. So they've really got to show a lot more di discipline committing to stop the baseline. We'll see what she does here on this possession. And Ryan Bolesky with a good foul there as they were caught. Yeah, you can see a little bit of pressure up court by Manitoba. They're chasing over top of the BC uh, offensive players who are trying to set picks. They need to go under on those reads in the open court. Garrett cross court, Riley Bissenden at the top. Van Beckel, another shot with the left hand, no good. My, nice job by Thomas Ivano, though. He didn't let Nick Van Bakel cut to the baseline. He forced him back up high into the middle where there would be a help defender. Vevano tries to go through the gap. Julie Ewart will take the foul. 
And one of the things Thomas Levino has done a really good job of this tournament is he's kept space when he's got the ball. Mm -hmm. And so he's got space and moving, and he's been able to attack off the dribble a couple of times. That's something really unusual in wheelchair basketball, that attack off the dribble. Johnson down to Bolesky. Bolin comes back to pick that off. Van Baco over to Garrett. They just get it over the line in time. And Rossello's strap came undone there, so they'll stop the play. Nice pressure up court by Manitoba and good recovery inside that time. So we'll see Spencer Lambert come into the game for Manitoba, his first action today. Bissonen down low, and that was taken down on the baseline. Yeah, Joel Ewert went to try to seal low for Nick Van Bakel. Uh, Thomas Stevenow did a great job cutting off baseline, forcing that play to turn right back around. Joel Ewert got caught up on Thomas's ch wheel as he was pivoting and got dumped on the ground. <laughs> Joel also plays in the uh, Canadian National Rugby wheelchair rugby program, so I think that, that probably just... <laughs> that's a natural spot for him diving on the That fits perfectly for him. He feels right at home <laughs> with that contact. Van Bakel put it up. No good. Rebound there. We'll stay with BC. Josh Brown got caught reaching for that ball instead of boxing out. Yeah. So one of the things we saw, Bernard Rousseau's uh, strap break... Um, these players, as we mentioned, have lots of spare equipment, so they can take care of that. Ben Garrett puts it up and in. Nice cut by Ben Garrett. Space, faked in the front, cut in the back. A simple little facing cut to get open. So Manitoba on a little bit of a drought offensively here, down 10 to 4. Brown sealed off, whips it cross court. Devineau controls. He's going to raise up. Too long. Great job by BC crossing in the open court to set picks and get teammates open. Ewart dumps inside. Van Bakel just off the front of the rim. Nice job by Josh Brown. He's playing, he played loose on defense so he could overplay Van Bakel's shooting hand instead of backing up straight on him where Van Bakel might be able to take advantage of his height. Here goes Spencer Lambert working. Josh Brown picked out of the play, catches over the top. And he gets called for travel. So we talked about the, 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 the amount of equipment that can be broken by these players. The equipment's extremely expensive. You know, the average cost of these basketball wheelchairs that the players are in uh, and that the chairs are specific to themselves is, is starts at around $3,000. And then when you start adding some of the different component parts, to it, it can easily get up into the $5,000 range very, very quickly. Add to that the spare equipment that you go through. And it can become a really, really expensive sport. Unfortunately, finances can still be an obstacle to participation in sport not just in wheelchair basketball, but in other sports in Canada too. And sports should be for everybody, mm -hmm. not just those who can afford it. So that's a, always a challenge for these wheelchair basketball players is finding financial support just to pay for the equipment that allows them to get on the court. Looks like Manitoba's coming out and putting some pressure up court. Yeah, they sent Thevino up, pressure the ball. Megan Smith in for BC. Megan gets down there. 
runs into Bull and uses it as a screener, and Garrett, the trailer, knocks it down. Yeah, pushes in for that short, dump, short jumper. Manitoba got collapsed too low. And now some full court pressure from BC. Brown to Theveno, just at half court. They need one more pass. They get it to Beth Johnson. Inside, Brown, scoop shot good. Great leading pass by Beth Johnson. Put it right out on Josh Brown's hand so that he could catch and go right in for the layup. Nice pass. Ben Garrett looking for help up top. Nobody looking for the ball. They get it to Megan Smith. And no one aware of the shot clock on that possession. So nice job by Manitoba. Put a bit of pressure up court. Delay the BC offense from getting up court. So it takes some time off the clock. And then disrupts them in getting into their set up court. And the young BC players not aware of the clock at that point in time. Getting that shot clock violation. Brown up. Bolesky going to be out of his reach. So you can use the press for a couple of different things. You can use it to try to steal the ball, or you can use it just to take time off the, off the clock and be disruptive. Manitoba using it to be disruptive in that case. Garrett to Bisson on the baseline. I think that got tipped by Spencer Lambert, but the rebound and put back is good, plus the foul for Joel Okima. Yeah, great finish by Joel. He, he has the length and the reach over the Manitoba players right now. Took his time mm -hmm. to finish on that shot. Joel's free throw off the glass and in. Here goes Lambert. Up the floor. Leads pass to Theveno. Too strong. And I think Thomas there could have taken the opportunity to slow himself down and settle instead of having to go on the move. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and like, like any shot, always follow through. And a good call there as Okima went in a little out of control. Beth Johnson just sitting on her ground. Yeah, that's, we've seen that a, several, a, a lot throughout the tournament, and we've seen it a couple times in this game, where young players, players get dribbling, they drop their head, they don't read that defender. Got to keep your head up and read the court when you're in the dribble. Shot good. Manitoba battling their way back. Yeah, really nice job by Josh Brown. Keeps space and movement. Mm -hmm. Comes out of that spin move. Settles himself, gets balanced, balanced in line to take a controlled shot. Akima into the paint. Has the reach. And it's good again. Brown, nice catch on the move. And he, oh, looked like it was gonna drop, couldn't get it. You can see the pass wasn't quite there. It had to bobble a little bit, couldn't quite get his balance. That pass is so important. Pass to Megan Smith. Akima puts it up and in. Yeah, for young players out there, that pass is so important. That pass sets up the shot. Joel Akim has got seven quick points since checking in. Ten seconds for Manitoba. And Manitoba's having problems right now uh, with this BC pressure. It's, it's making them rush a little bit more than they want. And they won't be able to get a look out of that possession. So BC at the end of one leads 19 to eight. They turn up the pressure in the second half of that first quarter and Joel Akim came right in, got into the paint at will and scored seven in a row. Yeah, we've seen BC get to the basket. They, Nick Van Bakel got to the basket, cutting on the baseline. Joel Akeem is getting to the basket. They're finding mismatches uh, in, the, in the Manitoba defense, and they're getting through on the base, baseline especially. So Manitoba's got to tighten up their baseline defense, force those, uh, those big players high into help defenders, and they probably need to sag off of some of those outside shooters, make some of those outside shooters for BC prove themselves, 
first, take away that inside game, then look to take away the outside game. I liked it when they put pressure up court. They've got to keep doing that, making sure that they rotate under. BC, good decision to go up court and now disrupt the Manitoba team the way that Manitoba was trying to do to them. Um, Manitoba, they're getting open against that pressure. Now they got to take care of the ball. They got to take their time and pass well, really focus on following through to the hand of the teammate that they're passing to. And that's been a major teaching point for Manitoba all week as they have struggled with those passes to the interior for most of their games so far. Yeah, I think it's one of the things we, we hear so many people focus on, you got to get in the gym and shoot, you got to get in the gym and shoot, got to get in the gym and shoot. And the problem with that is you forget that you don't get to shoot unless you can pass to the person first. And so I, I think passing get, and catching get overlooked as skills that need to be worked on. And the great thing about passing and catching is you got to work on it with somebody. That makes it a social skill. That makes it fun. You're doing it with somebody else. You know, drag your brother, your sister out there, your mom, <laughs> your dad, whoever, you know, and get them to pass with you. Mm -hmm. BC will open with the possession. Inside, sneaking in was Norris, can't handle it. Yeah, there's that baseline gap again. Teo Ra has to, has to fill that, has to take that away and for, force Matt Norris back high. He can't let him beat him baseline. If that pass had gone through, Matt Norris's right hand's wide open for a short jumper. Bevan O up top now. Looking around, spins at the elbow. Rosello with the seal on Akima, and Josh Brown knocks the shot down. Yeah, Josh Brown, solid outside shooter. He has been all tournament. He's really taking his time to get set and take quality shots. Here goes Norris up court. Another lead pass. Akima using his reach to do damage, but can't finish that one. Beveno holds that ball high. Shot was tipped, no good. Fumbling with it, they get it back, and he draws a foul. I really love how this Manitoba team, they just play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like one possession is different from another. They just come out and they're just trying to play every single possession as hard as they possibly can. They, doesn't matter what the score is, they're always just practicing, working on executing and playing every possession hard. And with basically the entire group returning for the next quad, they have a lot to be excited about. Oh yeah, they've done a great job building this program uh, and, and getting a bunch of really good kids to play together. So violation there on the free throw and they'll get a side out. Yeah, I've had a chance to chat with a number of the Manitoba parents this, this week, and that parental support is so key for these young athletes, knowing they've got that, that foundation behind them as they move forward. We'll see what dance moves uh, Teo Ra's father pulls out this morning. Yes. <laughs> There's the pick and the roll and the finish. Nice little pick and roll. Nice little pick and roll. Again, I think that Manitoba wants to stay in there and make the BC players shoot from outside. 21-10, BC leading by 11. You can see the space that Manitoba's creating in the BC team. Now they have to take advantage of that with either cuts or picks. Brown trying to get a little cheeky on the inside. Pass is tipped away. Yeah, it, Josh, is, he's four feet from the basket. Take that. You're not going to get much better than that. Wilton comes down to the baseline to try to free Thevenot. A lot of people down there. They fake the dribble handoff. We'll count that as a pass to the other side, but he can't finish. There's Bernard Rossello with another offensive <laughs> rebound. He's got a nose for the ball. He's not the tallest guy out there, but he's finding a way in. Bissonen in at the elbow. Akima keeps shooting. In and out. Riley sneaks in for the offensive board. Hit from behind. Be a turnover. 
Great communication by Josh Brown, telling Thomas Stevenot to rotate on defense to put pressure on, uh, on Joel Akima on that shot. Brown weaves in and out at the elbow. He's clipped, and he'll get two free throws. First free throw is off. Second one no good as well. Josh upset with himself for that one. Yeah, one of the things I get a chance to work each morning at our training center, National Training Center with Josh Brown, his, his, his weakness really, his biggest weakness, uh, is he can tend to beat himself up. When he does that, he loses focus on the game. Akima, another make. What do you do if you're Manitoba now where he's reaching up over the top, no matter who you're sending at him? Well, first thing, you've got to push him out wider. I think that's, that's one thing. You can't let him get that spot on the edge of the key. Um, height really is only a factor when it gets close to the basket. And Devino's right wheel out of bounds. inside Norris takes that hit and he'll get two free throws so right now what we can start to see is the Manitoba team is starting to get a little bit too focused on their side of the court defensively and to defend as a team you've got to see both sides of the court identify threats so you know whether you've got to leave your side a little bit to help mm -hmm. and BC baiting them into all their defenders coming up to that ball side BC doing a great job pulling those defenders out and then attacking backs uh, with picks and cuts to free up their teammates. Free throw off, Rossello gonna let it go. So I like the spacing on the Manitoba offense to start. You can see some really big gaps in the backs of the defenders. Now they've got to capitalize on those gaps. Brown's shot, no good. Rossello nearly had another offensive board. And now three on two. Alkima stops, waits for the help. Bissenden on a crosser. She looks around. Nearly got it inside to Okima. Saved by Lynette Boland. Shot is short. Offensive board. Too far underneath. Joel's going to keep grinding at it and get it to go. Yeah, great persistence by Joel Okima. To keep going after it, ap after it and after it. It's had a fantastic first half. There's that extended defender, Bernard Rossello's pick. Rossello crosses over, puts up a shot, no good. The follow, in and out, tough break. So they're recognizing, they're creating that space now, and now they're starting to see that high pick and roll. Bissenden working at her own pace here. Gonna go all the way down the lane, and they're gonna give her an offensive foul. So the Manitoba had the back pick that time. Probably needed to pause for a second, let that person release rather than take that contested outside shot. So a timeout here.
Manitoba grinding it in. Just can't get anything to go offensively down low. Yeah, they, they've had a couple of opportunities. Um, they, they're doing a really good job with spacing. You know, first offensive principles always start with space. Space is, is to your advantage on offense. So they're doing that. Uh, they're starting to, to see some of those picks. Uh, they need to turn those defenders so the defender's back is to the picker. They've tried to pick the face of the defender a couple of times. And then as they get to the rim, take your time and follow through. Uh, BC, if they're going to come out and extend like that, then as they extend, they've got to recognize the next read is for a pick. And they've got to look around behind them and see where is that pick coming from so they can collapse in and switch so they don't get picked. So BC's doing what they want to do going out and making it difficult for Manitoba to get close to the basket. They have to fine tune their recovery off some of those picks. Manitoba, on the other hand, has to do a better job with their pick mechanics. Devino's first free throw, no good. Second one and that one goes through. There we go. That's the nice, the nice fall that we're talking about. Harrison over to Tanner Young into the game. So they put Gabe and Tanner in for a little bit of action here at the end of the second quarter. Brown trying to contest over the screen and it works. Yeah, so there's, there's what we want to see. I think Manitoba wants to see a little bit more of. Make the BC players take outside shots with that screen pushed out one chair length off the edge of the key. Young all over Josh Brown. He needs help from somebody. They go cross court. Teo Raw, six on the shot clock. Down to the elbow, back to Josh Brown. Defender comes out to help. He just had to heave that one away. So there, there were a couple opportunities for Manitoba to set picks there, but they started to try to set them with their foot plate. They have to pick with the rear axle of their, their rear wheel uh, on the caster of that defender closest to the basket. So they're a little bit off in their mechanics. Dump inside, nice catch by Young, but he's too far underneath now. And it'll be three of the key. Yeah, a little bit of a bump by Thomas Thiveno behind him. Just kind of shoved TJ. Uh, underneath the basket, and he lost his position to shoot. I'm sure the uh, official will be aware of that next time. A trick of the trade. Well, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of contact going on out there for these officials. And they'll send that the other way now. So we've seen a number of offensive fouls in this game, and... and as I've watched the game over the last few years, there's a trend in the sport where there's an increasing number of offensive fouls being called, and rightly so, and we're seeing players missing picks and, and shooting past defenders. All of this goes back to a tiny little mechanical difficulty, and players aren't learning how to stop when they're first learning how to push. Harrison inside. That shot's off. Second one. Looks up. Too strong. Gabe doesn't miss those very often. No, no, he's a, he's a solid inside presence for BC and really takes his time, and he's one of their most consistent scorers and certainly one of the most consistent scorers inside in the tournament. Brown, there's a cutting Rossello. He's wide open, gets the roll. Great read. You see the, the BC defender rotate over so they could triple switch, stop that pick and roll on, on the ball side. Rossello identifying that defender moving. Cutting to the basket when the opening happened. Great, smart read by the young man. Harrison up top. Tanner Young got down inside, in and out. Riley Bissenden's put back, no. Let's see if Manitoba can get themselves on a little run here to close the half. There's Matthew Wilton's signature back pick. Brown inside, and he rushed that attempt with, with helpers on either side. Now back the other way in transition. Bissenden's shot too strong. Great job by Thomas Thiveno to pull away from Riley as she's driving to the basket and not pick up the foul. Josh a little loose with the ball, lost that one. And they'll get a foul call here.
Harrison DeYoung. Looks around, Megan Smith inside, and they have no one to contest there. You don't want to take a foul like that. Yeah, no, I, 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 and the other thing too is I think you don't want to jump Tanner Young, uh, Tanner Young, uh, TJ out there. You want to make him get in, you want to deny his inside presence. So I don't think you jump him, I think you go back in. You put a bit of pressure on him, but you don't jump him. Make him prove it from outside first. Megan Smith's first free throw, too strong. Harrison puts it up, off the back of the rim. Yeah, BC's made a slight adjustment when they gave Harrison up high on the point, and Manitoba jumps on the wing. There's no help from the point. You can't help off Gabe Harrison, so that's why I don't think you jump uh, TJ. Rossello snuck inside. Re Young recovers before he can put a shot up. And it will stay Manitoba ball. Two seconds on the shot clock. In, in the wheelchair game, when there's under four or five seconds on the shot clock, what's your go-to play call? Well, you try to get somebody posted up in a low block if you can, and then you just simply kick to them and they shoot over top of somebody. Manitoba doesn't have a lot of height. So what Manitoba should do, start with more space. And remember, you don't have to pass the ball in for four seconds. You got five seconds before you have to pass that ball in. So use that four seconds plus the two. You got six seconds to attack. And unfortunate there, no no real off-ball movement. They just kind of dumped it no, in. No. Devineau not ready to put it up, so time out here. Yeah, a lot of players, what they do is they look and they see that shot clock and they think, oh my gosh, two seconds. We've only got two seconds to shoot. What are we going to do? And they kind of freak out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what they need to do is they need to remember, use the four seconds of dead ball time before a pass has to be made. And it might only take two seconds of movement. It might take three seconds of movement. But you can attack off ball as long as you start with space. Manitoba has been really good at getting that space. Mm -hmm. Just think, run your offense like you normally would. I think that. that's exactly what Coach Jaworski is saying is on a dead ball, two seconds, what are we doing? It'll be interesting to see as they come out if Manitoba makes an adjustment, stops jumping the BC players on the wings. Um, or do they jump but bring help from a different side of the court? Mm -hmm. Instead of from the point where Gabe Harrison is, bring it from the offside elbow. Harrison spins around. Back, Akima's had the hot hand. Back to Gabe. Still looking for his first make of the day. <laughs> Can't get it there. And Brown just lost control of the chair a little bit. Yeah, there we saw that Manitoba defender, uh, Taylor Wad, jump. And Thomas Stevenson left one on one up high with Gabe Harrison. Gabe Harrison ha has space. He was able to cut on him. Inside, Lynette Boland gets the roll. Great power pivot by Lynette Boland. Textbook move. She faked low on the baseline. Bernard Rossello takes that away, and she does a beautiful power pivot move to get inside. 27-13, BC leading by 14. There's that extended defender. Somebody's got to come and pick that for Manitoba. Marcelo down. They put Thevenot up to give it a go. Akima spins back around. Ewart tries to set a pick. Can't get it, but Joel will knock down another one. Yeah, he's been shooting really well today. Very, very patient. Taking his time, whether he's been inside or outside. So under 40 seconds to go in the first half. Devin O looking for the dump to Rossello, but the big arms of Harrison take it away. No difference between shot clock and game clock, so will BC hold for one? They have Derek Jazeski underneath, wide open, and he takes it. Yeah, Derek sneaks in behind the Manitoba defender for the easy layup. 
And so Brown will throw it up court. They're not going to get anything out of this unless Devino makes this heave. Almost. Yeah, so not, not a bad look <laughs> with time running down. At the end of the first half, BC leading 31 to 13. We'll be back with the second half in just under 10 minutes.
Welcome back. Just about ready to get the second half going here between British Columbia and Manitoba. BC up 31 to 13. What is Manitoba going to do in this third quarter, Frog, to build on their good habits with another game and tipping off in three hours? Yeah, you know, what they got to do is they got to improve their interior defense. They've got to stop, uh, deny baseline, force those high cutters into their help. And they're going to have to figure out where their help's going to come from, too. Because if Gabe Harrison for for BC is up high or a, a good strong cutters up high that can't bring their help from there. So that's the first thing. Their interior defense has to improve. On offense, it's going to be able to picking extended defenders so they can get good quality shots going to the rim. Beth Johnson back in, her passing lane denied. Tipped and stolen away. There goes Megan Smith. Inside, puts up a shot. Blocked. Thomas Thevenot, 0 of 7 in the first half. He'll try to get himself on the board here. Looking for that dump pass. Josh Brown says no, give it to somebody else. Rossello looking to flash up top. Ends up cutting inside. Josh gets to the elbow. The shot no good. Thevenot offensive board. Gets the roll. Yeah, and Beth Johnson came in. She set a pick for Thomas 7 -0. He swings the ball to the other side. Defense rotates. You get the scoring opportunity for Josh Brown, but you also get the offensive rebound off the pick for Thomas Stevenow. And that'll go the other way. So that's that pick on those extended BC defenders. And, and Beth Johnson, Johnson great at picking. So a good person to have come in and start the second half to help get Manitoba going with that, uh, that pick and roll offense. Here's Josh Brown. Moving inside, shot off. Josh Brown draws that illegal screen. Yeah, Joel Akima just clipped Josh as they were going up court. And Josh fell down. And the official calling that offensive. So they get it into Johnson. She looks for Josh Brown. Spins off the defender. Dump inside to Beth. She has a shot. Gets it tipped. You can almost see Beth Johnson searching around for somebody to pick and ending up cutting. Tipped. Van Bakel looks inside. Smith catches it off the bounce. Puts up a shot, no good. Bull and sneaks in for the offensive board and she draws a foul. Yeah, the Manitoba defense a little bit confused right there as to where they were gonna rotate. And a little bit slow in their rotations. So for BC coming out, continue to work to get their big players in the key. You know, off cuts on the baseline or cuts up high, and those elbows will open up if Manitoba jumps on the wings. And, uh, and continue to push Manitoba outside. If they know Manitoba's gonna be picking them as they extend, just see those picks and collapse underneath them. Bolins makes both. Brown from the free throw line drills it. Nice look. Both defenders from BC collapsed in on Ryan Bolesky's cut. Josh Brown sees both the backs of the defenders, pulls up for that short jumper. Van Bakel looking around. Akima, cross court. Gets it right back to Joel, gets it in the shooting pocket and makes another one. Yeah, nice shot by Joel Akima, but up high. Nick Van Bakel cutting up high in those elbow spots. Manitoba's got to be careful 
Uh, they've got to stop those cuts because Van Bakel's right there for an offensive rebound if Joel Akima misses that shot. Although I'm not sure Joel's going to miss today. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Joel now 7 of 11 from the field after that. Van Bakel probing around, waiting for his teammates to get up the floor. Lob inside. Lynette Boland. Femino got a tip on it. Akima, keep it going. Yeah, there's some, there's some gaps in the Manitoba defense. They're having some confusion back there, identifying the threats and stopping the threats. They're getting too focused on the ball and not identifying cutters as the primary threats going to the basket. Devino shot up, no good. It's a good look, he just needs to take his time. Akuma, keep it going. Stops himself. To back now, he's gonna cut. Lob inside Lynette Boland. Last three possessions now, BC's had an unopposed cutter to the rim. Yeah, again, in the open court, the your first priority is to stop cutters going to the basket. Sometimes that means you stop the ball. Sometimes that means you stop people off ball and help off the ball. Shot too strong. Good defense there from Manitoba, cutting off Megan Smith and getting the steal. Brown spins on Akima, almost had the angle. Strong recovery. Josh has to whip it across the court. Knocked out of bounds. So one of Manitoba's strengths is being creating space. They need to go back to that and then look for those picks. BC doing a great job putting pressure and really making it hard for Manitoba to read the court and move where they want to move. Josh Brown will inbound on the baseline. There's the screens. Can't make the shot though. Yeah, not much there. Manitoba with a triple screen. Josh Brown has to put it up, no space to attack. Nobody back on the leak out. Norris settles himself down and puts it in. This is one of the biggest weaknesses. Anytime you see a double, see a double or triple screen mm -hmm. on the offense in wheelchair basketball, it really opens up that, that transition opportunity for the other team if they can capitalize on it. You have gotta make that shot, otherwise it's two points going the other way. Devin, they're lucky to retain possession. Brown will sneak it up, can't get the roll, and he's fouled. Manitoba's touch around the basket today has just skirted them. Yeah, tough one. They're getting some looks. They're rushing them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Thomas had a good look. Take the extra second to take a quality shot. On the other side, Josh Brown, you, you see him using the different spots to create a scoring opportunity inside. And that's put him to the line for, for two shots. First free throw is good. Yeah, Josh Brown very quietly having a really strong tournament. One of the top scorers here and showing a lot of leadership out here for this Manitoba team. That one's in and out. Josh nearly gets a steal. And it'll end up going off of Matt Norris's fingertip out of bounds. Yeah, right idea. Get that ball, headman that ball of court by Joel Akima. They've got to create a better passing lane. So that's where, uh, where Matt Norris could stop and cut back to the ball and be a post. Brown has the seal, and the shot's good again. Still a good read by BC. They're pushing those Manitoba screens out wide mm -hmm. and forcing Manitoba to take outside shots. Manitoba, of course, finally has to create a little bit better space so they get pick and rolls and get to the rim. Riley Bisson in back in for BC, looking around. Down, Akima on the baseline. Extra dribble, dump inside off the give and go. She just can't finish. 
Great pick and roll. That was initiated by Matt Norris setting a cross pick for Riley. And Riley recognizing that and getting, it to the, getting to the hoop. Inside, Thevin O, no good. Browns follow, no good. Thomas tips it to himself, and he finally gets one to drop. So I love the way Manitoba's keeping after it, but they got to take a second as they're going in. They've got time, and it looks like they're just a little bit relaxed mentally. Yeah, Manitoba shot just 24% in that first half with a bunch of those looks coming from inside the arc. BC will take a timeout here, I believe. Yes, they will. Yeah, so Simon Cass probably using this timeout to teach a little bit. Probably wants to correct a little bit because he's seen Manitoba get to the rim and wants to tighten up his defense. But he also knows he's got a young team that he's going to teach and use this game to teach and get ready for that next quad. And, you know, again, as we've mentioned in the past, he returns all but two players of this squad. And this group's been together for the past four years, and now he'll get a chance to have them for another four years getting ready for the next Canada Games. And when a team can come in, basically a full roster with eight years of experience. That's, that's is that unprecedented? I mean, oh, it sounds like it. It's, it's what each one of these programs want to do. They want to have a group that are veterans that are coming in with, say, two Canada Games, uh, Canada Games experience in this moment, and then a young group coming up that are getting their first and, and create that cycle where they're constantly reloading uh, like that. Both these programs have established the foundation now where they can do that for the next quad. Now they want to bring up that next generation that'll get their first time experience uh, next go round. Manitoba will get a tech, possibly for a, a points violation. I don't know what. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the technical foul would be. Megan Smith makes good on it. Really nice shot by Megan Smith. I've been really impressed with her as I've seen her go on in the tournament. She's, uh, you know, uh, she's really making some good decisions out there, doing a lot of different things on the court. Works hard all the time. So really, really impressive performance by this young lady. Constantly growing as each game's gone on. Riley gets past one defender. Josh Brown comes out on her. She gets into the paint. Shot is up. No good. Riley's really good at creating space. And once that shot starts to fall, she'll become a really dangerous player. Yep, absolutely. Devin O the other way. No. Brown's finish. Didn't get the angle on that. Second one, he does. Yeah, I got a question the Manitoba team right now. They look like they're padding their offensive rebounding stats <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Love the hustle, though, to stay with the play and finish. 42-24. Bissing it up top. Inside, Okuma sealed off. Why not? That one doesn't drop. There we do. You see a much better job keeping those BC players from getting in the interior, even on the box out offside. Brown down on the baseline. And a really tight foul there called on Riley Bissenden. So the last couple of possessions, we've seen BC in defensive transition coming back, and they're getting a little bit too focused on the ball and not seeing both sides of the court. And they've got to remember to connect both sides of their defense so they see the players attacking offside as well as ball side. One of the things I'm always watching for, I'm always watching players to see how much they move their head so they can see the full court. Lambert. No look pass to Brown, and he puts in the reverse, plus one. What a lucky play. Wow. Wow, great read. <laughs> tough, tough play by Josh Brown. He saw that little bit of a gap, saw the defender look out instead of in, and he cut inside uh, on the baseline to get open. Great finish by Josh Brown. Nice little scoop. That one in and out, but he gets his own rebound. Chance for the four-point play. Doesn't get it. Defense! 
Megan Smith hounded in the front court. Ewart, shovel pass. Ends up picking it back up. Got to get it out of his hands. Garrett can't hang on. Manitoba's intensity picking up here the last minute. Yeah, a little bit of confusion on BC's part in recognizing things and in recognizing the need to post for the ball and then create space. Here goes Josh Brown. We'll call that a pass to Matt Wilton who finishes. A nice little, little seal by Spencer Lambert to get Josh Brown to the hoop. So we're seeing that now. We're starting to see Manitoba get to the rim. So Ben Garrett will bring it up. Manitoba cut the lead back to 14. Kicks cross court. They'll let Arkema take that shot. He kicks inside. Megan Smith. No foul called. And it'll stay BC ball. Just two on the shot clock. So Gabe Harrison's going to come in now. And you got to expect he'll be the one looking to get this ball in the short clock scenario. They end up dumping it to Akima. That's got to be two seconds as he rolls through. Yeah, a little bit of confusion on Manitoba's part, getting their matchups the way they wanted. So it'll be interesting to see if the next offensive possession, if we see Gabe Harrison up high in the BC offense and trying to cut to get in in one of those elbow gaps. Raw is wide open underneath. Can Teo finish? Pushed it a little far. Here comes Joel Ewart. The lane opens up in front of him. Nice dish to Megan Smith who converts. Great pass, great finish. A lot of attention pay, paid to the, the Joel Akima Gabe Harrison side by Manitoba and they missed seeing the other side of the court. Brown hits that hole hard. Thevino weaves in, blocked by Akima. Here comes Ben Garrett, outlet pass. Akima has time, doesn't need to rush. Fading back, doesn't get the roll. And Lambert will just hold on. So a little bit of a rally there for Manitoba, but BC holding steady. Yeah, Manitoba doing a really good job now, starting to get some reads going to the basket. But they're a little bit rushed on hitting those shots. They just need to take a second to finish the first time. They've been fortunate to get a lot of those offensive rebounds and putbacks. Uh, on the other side, they've tightened up a little bit on their defense, starting to deny a little bit of that interior game by BC. BC's being able to get some of that back in transition. Um, BC starting to come out, put some pressure outside. They just have to see uh, behind them on defense so they can go under and force Manitoba back into those outside shots. And then on the offensive end, take their time a little bit and um, and read for that high person especially. They had some success with that high person getting in at the elbows and some of those elbow or baseline cuts in the past off mismatches. Just be patient to let that develop, make that read and see that in this final quarter. Love the Manitoba parents on the other side. They're not letting up. <laughs> They're in this game right to the end. And that's, I think that's great. It shows how much support they have for their, for their team. They've definitely been one of the most vocal fan sections all week. They have a party over there during the game. Yeah, once they refine their dance moves over <laughs> the next course four years, I think. <laughs> We've got some big things to expect from them. The halftime performers at the 2023 20, Canada Games yep. <laughs> Championship. Yeah, they just have a couple musical instruments out there now. They're going to have a whole band. <laughs> BC right down there, too. You can hear their horns in the background. It's been a consistent presence, too. I don't know. The Ontario parents' uh, Viking clap is also up there for one of there's, my favorites this week. There's a, there's a bunch of fan groups that are really vying for, for <laughs> most boisterous fans at the games. We'll hand out our awards at halftime of the gold medal game. 
Yeah, there's that high cut by Gabe Harrison at the elbow. And Gabe gets that one to go. Yeah. So he's one-on-one -on -one up high against the Manitoba defender. He's backing up, creating space. Then he's just doing a facing cut on, uh, uh, on that Manitoba defender. They're going to have to bring help from the elbow to stop that, and they're going to have to make contact with Gabe as he backs up if they're going to stop that. Beveno inside, too strong. Nice cross pick by Josh Brown and Taylor Raw open down on the baseline as Thomas rolled in. So a couple of different scoring opportunities out of that pick. Riley gets cut off. She hesitates. Looking around for help. Whipped inside. Really nice find for the bucket. And yeah, there's the baseline cut that Manitoba has to stop. So Gabe Harrison's gotten in off the elbow cut, a facing cut, and then off the baseline cut and back-to-back -back possessions. Josh Brown weaves forward. Looking. Over to Rossello. Raw comes down for the pick. Bernard's shot, no good. Josh Brown will inbound. Inside, raw. Brown's shot up, no good. Rossello nearly able to come down with it. A good hustle by Matthew Wilton trying to save that ball. So Manitoba looks a little bit hesitant right now as to how they're going to create space. They're a little bit in tight to get the space they want. They need to start a little bit farther from the basket to open up the gaps that they need. Here's Gabe Harrison up high. This is that spot where it frees him up one-on-one. -on -one. It's a really tough spot for the defense to rotate from. And a nice cut inside. Riley just can't get her finishes down today. Devineau has Raw on the cut. Rossello also open on the baseline. So that time Manitoba a little bit farther out to start their offense. That's good. That makes BC come out. That opens up a little bit more space for those picks. And Josh Brown gets that pick on ball, and then they swing off ball to attack. Pass cross court. Van Bakel rips it out of the hands of Thomas Theveno and finishes. Theveno up court. Hit, no call. Riley grabs the rebound. Van Backel, Megan Smith's wide open, just pushed it a little far. Yeah, we can see the Manitoba defenders are starting to get a little bit fixated on their matchup in the open court and go into a matchup. It's good to get your matchup, but you gotta identify threats in the open court. And sometimes the person, sometimes the person you're going to guard isn't the person who's most likely to score in the next second or two. And you gotta leave your matchup to go help stop a uh, cutter to the basket. And that might be what Coach Jaworski wants to discuss in this timeout as they've gotten beat deep a couple times in transition. Yeah, one of the things you always want to do, there's some simple guidelines in, in, in wheelchair basketball, guard the greatest threat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, one of, that's, a, that's our second guideline in, in making our decisions. First one is you don't let anybody go baseline, ever. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> um, but then next one is guard the greatest threat. But greatest threat doesn't always mean it's a person. Sometimes it's a, a, a place where a person's moving to on the court. So somebody who's a great scorer sitting at half court, maybe less of a threat than somebody who's not as good a scorer, but they're right underneath the basket. You gotta stop the person right underneath the basket. So it's identifying threats and how they change in the open court. 
that's one of the challenges for these young players is to go beyond um, that initial threat identification and add that to their decision-making process. So Manitoba will get it here off the timeout. 6.35 remaining in the game. Works that cut. Rossello down to the baseline. Shot up. No good. Tipped. Loose. Raw with the save. And he's just got to get it out of there. Brown can't quite handle it. Good hustle for the rebound by Taylor Raw. Um, just uh, couldn't quite, you know, get the pass to Josh Brown. He was in a good spot to take a little, a little jump shot. Tanner Young, cross court kick. Bissonen into Ewart. Throws that one up and drills it. Nice look by Joel. You saw Nick Van Bakel cutting from the point, though. That's part of what freed that up. Devino, nice catch and finish. Great seal by Matthew Welton to get Thomas Devino in position to take that short jumper. Nick Van Backel up the floor. Waiting for something to develop. Young wasn't ready for it. They get it back. Bissenden on the baseline. She'll put that one up and drain it. Nice look by Riley. Devino in. No good. Josh Brown, another offensive board. And a putback. Yeah, that came because they got Joel Ewer picked out in the backcourt. That opened up a bigger gap in that BC defense. BC needed to collapse in a little bit and make Manitoba try to take an outside shot as Joel recovered. Van Bakel at the top. Megan Smith knocked over. So BC running that high-low game on either of the wings, putting a cutter like Gabe Harrison or Nick Van Bakel up high. So if Manitoba was to rotate from that high position, they're going to open that person for a cut. Even if they don't rotate, that person still has space to cut on one of those elbow gaps. Nice catch in traffic, Tanner Young. Rossello. Catch on the move, the scoop, high off glass and in. Great pass up court to Bernard's hand. Bernard really taking his time. You can see him get his balance and then fall through on that nice little scoop. Riley looking for a cutter. Van Bakel flashes up top. Ewart also looking for someone. He'll decide to shoot. No good. It almost looked like that flip up to beat the shot clock was going to drop. Good clock awareness by Nick Van Bakel, though. I mean, he knew it didn't hit the rim, and he better get something up. Three thirty left in this one. Kick cross court. Rossello has trouble, recovers. Has room, put it up, young blood. And he drills it. Nice look. Nice look. I love how he's getting himself set. He's getting his balance. He's taking a quality shot every time. He's recognizing when he's open. 
really good decision making. We're seeing him improving with each and every shot. Young the catch in the lane. Off. Tanner, great power pivot to put himself in position there. Brown knocked down. <laughs> Looking for a foul call that doesn't come. No, I thought TJ from BC, he did a great job keeping, keeping his line and going straight, uh, not turning into Josh Brown to pick up that foul. It was a good position on TJ's part. Joel Akima, sharp shooter back in. Young, dumb inside, Ewart, just offside. Nice look by Joel Ewart. Brown at the elbow. Steadies himself from the other side, short. Akima the board, the leak out pass oh. to Tanner Young. Nice outlet by Joel Akima. Really nice outlet. Young takes his time, but can't finish. See BC's defense starting high now. Manitoba has to get, get space to be able to get the gaps they want. Megan Smith with the block. BC did a great job collapsing under that time to take away those gaps. Rossello, the back cut, gets the finish. Awesome baseline cut. He's sneaky. Yeah. Gets in offensive <laughs> rebounds, and now he's getting in for offensive shots. Little kid plays big. Young, shot no good. Rossello fighting for the rebound. Tanner's second attempt, too strong. Tipped away, stays BC ball. So TJ's getting some good looks. Looks like he's rushing it a little bit, just needs to take a breath before he shoots. Young, that time he takes a while to set himself but can't hit it. Another tip, Riley's put back is good. Great job by Joel Ewart there to help Riley Bissenden get back in on defense, that's a pick to get her free. Josh Brown looks. Bissenden gets her hands in and gets it tapped out of bounds. Yeah, Staying aggressive. The Manitoba players just all kind of came over. They converged in that space, took all their space away. They actually need to go away to create the op offensive opportunity in that instance. And an errant buzzer. Well, they're going to take one last time out. So Coach Jaworski will drop a play here for the out of bounds. Yeah, probably not a bad idea. They, they looked a little bit bunched up there, and they're not going to get a quality look. Go ahead, call the timeout. Let them come back out, get organized, get space so they can attack and get a quality possession. So BC's done a really good job today, I think. Coach Cass has done a great job getting all, like, all of his players in, 
Uh, the only player I think that hasn't played today is Ben Hagel, and Ben Hagel, a veteran player, uh, he gets lots and lots of minutes. He, he's part of the U23 senior uh, men's program, and he comes in as a development player with senior men's program. So he's getting lots of minutes. Coach Cass getting lots of minutes for the other players as they build towards the future, trying a lot of different things, putting them in some different spots on the court so they have to make different reads and add to their game. And a strong way for them to go out with this performance. Yeah, definitely building towards the future. Definitely a team that people would want to keep an eye on over the next four years as they get ready for the next Canada Games. Rosello looking for help up top. Brown. And clock will run out on that. Young shot, no good. Great seal by Joel Ewer to get Tanner, Tanner Young, uh, Young into the key. Late foul called there. So Manitoba will get one last possession. Josh will settle in, can't make it. So that'll close this one out. BC wraps up an 18 point win to close out their tournament on a high note. Yeah, great finish by BC. You know, they got a chance, as we mentioned, to play all of their players, give all of them an opportunity to grow, try some new and different things. So great tournament for BC, really sets the stage for the next quadrennial with this young team. Uh, on the other side, same thing with Manitoba. Manitoba was really consistent in adding skills throughout the tournament. You could see them practicing just the simple little concepts of space, uh, attacking backs on offense, um, how they want to rotate and get wheel position on defense and do a lot of different things. So both of these teams got great experience in this event and it really sets the stage for the next quadrennial for them. And we'll see Manitoba again later on this afternoon. So maybe getting to play twice in a short span, they can improve on this effort. Yeah, I don't know many coaches are going to say they can have too many opportunities to train their athletes and get them better. So I think, yeah, we'll see them uh, take advantage of this next game later on today to continue to grow and improve and, and set the table for the next quad. Coming up next, we have Team Saskatchewan having their last game, and Newfoundland will close out their tournament as well. Bozy will be in the chair for story time uh, while Frog takes a break, so we'll be right back at the top of the clock with this one.